our questions and answers we had a nice one before we start is that somebody emailed us and instead of typing a whole response we go into the subject of tattoos. They emailed us about uh, tattoos and particularly facial and tribal tattoos for a specific nation and is this allowed as a part of a cultural and, and, and different reasons. And you know the, the shaykhs they, they're not in the business of making fatwas, these are not something of any interest nor <coughs> not the position of the shaykh to do that. The reality that we try to teach is that to give you the ability to make your own fatwa. Means that if we understand the hikmah and the wisdom of energy then people can govern themselves appropriately. When awliya come into our lives and teach us on this subject of piercing, tattooing, marking, we'll call this satanic yoking. So they'll make a video for satanic yoking. Satanic yoking is that unseen forces that don't like human beings and understand geometry, energy and numerology. As a result of their ancient understandings in the immense dislike for humans there are certain markings and actions that they inspire to be put upon humans and that what we call yoking. So means that when you have a cattle and uh, some people refer to even human as cattle but when you have cattle you, you think that you own that cattle especially if you're not a, a good owner, right? If you're, if you're an abusive person and you own cattle you think that you own it and as a result of you owning it you can do whatever you want to do to that cattle to show your ownership and, and how you govern that creature. So already now you're in a conflict with the heavens because who owns human beings? Allah I created you only to worship me. Your life must be a form of… As Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Worshipness, your seeking of knowledge must be a form of worshipness, your rizq must be a a, a form of worshipness because Allah created us to worship, jinni wal ins. So I'm owned by Allah under the kingdom of Sayyidina Muhammad that everything in my life is to glorify Allah Halal work, you can't say I rob banks to build masjids. No I have to work halal, I have to be good and Allah gives me slowly. I have to do my awrad, my zikr, my worshipness, my prayers, means that everything for Allah I seek knowledge to glorify Allah means I seek law for the greater understanding of Allah's laws and kingdoms. I seek business to glorify Allah and to be of service to Allah I seek realities to glorify Allah's kingdom in sciences and medicines. So it means our whole life is for Allah now the unrighteous person says, no this cow is mine, so it's wrong. And as a result this cow I'm now going to burn my name onto it. And he begins to take this fire 
and start marking all over the cow. And that is a, a way in which to show an ownership that I own this cow. And the movement of it, we said before even they come and they say, well this cow is so big I don't want to move it with a string. So then he puts a, a loop into the nose because the nose is very sensitive and painful. Begin to put a loop between the two nostrils and as a result with one finger he can move this 800-600 pound beast because the nose is very sensitive and painful for the creature. So they put this on the nose. They put a little rope on the nose and they pull 600 pound animal. If you pull from the neck it will never move with you. So this concept of yoking that shaitan has is that, I'm going to mark you and by means of that marking to the other shayateen and nefarious jinn I show how I own you. They don't care if humans know it. And most likely humans don't know it because even if you ask the AI, the AI became angered and said, no, no, these, these are sacred, sacred markings. I said, no, what about demonic influence over these sacred markings? They're not sacred. So it means that these shayateen and these, these bad jinn, they don't want humans to know. They want them not to understand these knowledge. These are the knowledge of awliya Allah that come out and describe. They're doing something to people. They're marking and yoking people to show their ownership and possession over people. And the more of these markings that they put on to people, many of them are to trap beings within the person. What do you call to put a… to encapsulate, to, to, to take something of a negative energy and lock it into something and then putting a mark on it and sealing that creature within that being. Many of what they teach and the markings that they're using are exactly that. That you don't know or you may know depending upon the level of, of nefarious uh, character, that creature is entering into that human, that marking seals it like a stamp, like a khatam, like a seal upon them. As a result these creatures are locked within that human to be used at that time, at a later time. And also all of the then markings and piercings upon their body. All of these are symbolic for these shayateen that they've marked this person. And as a result of marking these persons they have now all of these negative energies and, and immensely sort of negative markings and that's the danger. The danger is that people don't understand what they're being involved with, they don't understand what type of spirituality is, is being put upon them, they don't understand the origin of why these markings are coming. Means many of these ancient markings were not to glorify Allah none of them were. Many of the markings were inspired by demonic beings in which they thought if they imitate and emulate these demonic creatures they would be safeguarded from being attacked by them so that they, that they would copy their master in essence. That if the demon had a certain look they said that, okay as a fear we'll make our markings like them to be protected from any negative sort of difficulty or to show that they're owned. Like that's their maker, they're owned by that demon as a result other demons would leave them alone. So these were very pagan rituals in which the conjuring of demons, conjuring of negative energies were putting upon people and they were showing which of these shaitans they belong to and which tribes they belong to. Because remember these, these pagan sort of societies had demons in which they worshipped. They paid homage, they gave human sacrifices, they did many things for the conjuring of these energies and for these favors. As a result they became like the cattle for that demon. They had to have specific markings from them to show their allegiance to that demon. As a result they were given things and protected from things. So the reality of Islam is that Hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakeel.
means that, verily I put my faith and trust only in Allah There's nothing that can protect me but Allah If we don't know the source of these markings and these realities, that's why Islam doesn't allow it. That put no markings upon yourself, especially when people don't even understand what those markings were from. Now they say it's based on you know status, yeah but that's status from a tribal understanding that a thousand years ago feared these demons that they were conjuring. So modern day you would see churches with gargoyles. Then you ask the church, say, why would you have gargoyles on your building? So that was to protect us from the devils that were coming. So you use devils to protect you against devils? No. It's completely false. You use Allah to protect you against devils. The use of devils to protect you against devils was a trick from the devil. That's why Islamic ar uh, architecture has nothing like that, no type of negativity because it's a complete faith and sincerity. Allah is my protector. We definitely don't seek devils to protect us against devils. That's why Allah gave us, A'uzu Billahi min shaitani rajeem was to conquer all of these that seek refuge in Allah from every shaitan known and 99% unknown to you. So it means that what people are doing is unknown and that's the danger. They think it's something, okay I'll just put this marking on. Instead of a fatwa think of the energy. That what was this ancient significance and what, what demon or creature was asking these ancient civilizations to mark themselves to show that that's their maker, that's their protector and as a result their tribal hierarchy was based on these markings. Why? Because they were closer to that demon that was protecting them. So it means that these, these things are from the times of jahaliyyah and ignorance. And why they're coming back is similar to the Aztec markings. If anyone doesn't know what the demons of the Aztec culture were doing, it's now coming back to life. And it's coming back south of the border near San Diego because a lot of those Aztec demons are now in those cartels and in those drug organizations and in those gang organizations. They have all the same markings as those Aztec demons. Those demons were making 10,000 sacrifices a day, ripping out the hearts of people, eating it and calling it the house of God as a blasphemous act against the worshipness of Allah Why the demon always went for the heart? Because it's the seed of God, it's the seed of the house of God. That Allah resides within the qalb and the heart of the believer. So those are immense realities that humans don't know. They say, oh this is such a nice tourist place. Look these 10,000 steps that go up, this 10,000 people a day were being slaughtered on that. And as a result they were given favors and astronomy in information, all sorts of uh, jahaliyyah and ignorance was given to them. But they were extreme demonic cultures and as a result they're coming back for their deceitful one and you see the markings of all oh, these creatures are coming back. So no they're not cultural, no they're not in the hierarchy of, of uh, people's cultural belief. These are extremely demonic energies and demonic uh, realities and the conjuring of creatures that you can't take back. We have had experiences with people who have had tattoos of snakes and they said this was a kundalini energy. So no, no, no that's a shaitan because a snake is never anything good that the snake represents something from shaitan and that he was kicked out of paradise. As a result his image is always on this earth that the snake was a beatific creature in paradise who gave himself to Satan and as a result Satan entered into his mouth to go and tempt Adam. So same concept is being used, shaitan through the vehicle of a snake is tempting and making Adam and Eve to fall. And that tattoo actually they conjured an, a, a, a snake into that person's body. And many du'as, many energies and practices were used to try to pull those snakes out. But once you tattoo yourself it's like you're, you're bonding it with your being. 
very difficult, very difficult and very dangerous practice. So somebody who willingly wants to put these negative energies then you broke your auzu. Anybody saying, no this is cultural, it is a big danger from the times of jahiliyyah and ignorance. And when you're living in a time in which the deceit and dajjal and shayateen are now coming strong upon this earth, the last thing you want is anything that would allow them to enter within yourself, your family and your community. That's why everything has to be cleaned, everything has to be washed, everything has to be purified. The ta'weezes are given from the heavens, these are ruqya in which these are heavenly recitations and, and energies and everything heavenly is put upon the believer as a energy and light and that they have Allah in their heart, love of Sayyidina Muhammad in their heart and their protection is light. Their protection is their belief that produces light. That's the only thing that will save people, not the devils and not the demons. So this is a, a big, big difference. That's why we've given talks about the church and when the church has all of these images of a, an abused prophet in which he's barely wrapped in a loincloth and his body is all cut with blood and everything coming out, that's not the worship of God. And what's even more deceitful is to say that that image of that person now they're calling him a god. But in reality what are they saying? Because you go into their, their church and say, why this person is all bloodied? He said, because the devils did this to him, the, 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 the demons did this to him. So then by putting that image like that you're making people to fear the devil more than they fear Allah and it's psychological warfare against their belief. For if somebody truly believes that that man is God, why he's so badly beaten? Why he's all bloodied? You don't think God has power and might? Definitely against the devil who has no power. The devil has absolutely no power, he uses the power of humans to fight against the human being themselves. They have to take from the izzat of Allah, izzat al rasulu izzat al-mu'mineen. So it means his psychological warfare is very strong in the church. When they see the, the image, graven images with, don't make graven images of your Lord, put no images and statues within the beliefs and, and the houses of worship. And when you do, when you show it to be weak and beaten by the devil, what you're telling people is they fear the devil and that's what shaitan is saying, fear me, don't worry about God, I'm the one who's going to give you a beating. And they look at that and they're scared of the devil, hence they put devils on the outside for protection. So it's psychological warfare. That's why the respect for Sayyidina Isa is definitely very powerful. So powerful the devils would fear even approaching Sayyidina Isa because of his might and his, his dress from Allah It means then Islam holds it to its might that never to show an image of Sayyidina Isa in a position that would be offensive means that he holds the might and izzah of Allah and devils are scared even to approach that reality. So means that's the difference in the beatific reality of Islam. Those are not something small to train people to be scared of devils because look, look what they did to the Prophet of God, but then they call him God himself, what they're going to do to me and you? Islam is about don't show the devil as any power, you should fear only Allah No markings from the devil, no signs from the devil and that you keep Allah within your heart, that you have tawheed in the, in the belief of oneness and that might and majesty and power only come from Allah by keeping a clean heart and pure heart. We pray that Allah dress us and bless us with the immensities of these lights and that Sayyidina Isa coming to break the cross and kill the swine. That none of this what they attribute from Coca-Cola and from all of these ridiculous uh, practices has anything to do with the worshipness of Allah Anyone who loves Allah loves Sayyidina Isa salam, go out and feed people, do good deeds, righteous deeds, keep a clean heart, clean home, clean images. Don't emulate and copy anything pagan. Don't, don't think that I can do these things from pagan belief 
For if in an instant you should anger Allah and take away the blessings and the protection from Allah we have only ourselves to blame. These are very difficult and dangerous times in which Allah to become angered by us and by our action. There is no action small, everything small becomes something great at a different time. Means that Mawlana Shaykh would teach that you know the most dangerous problem is if you have a leak. If the pipe is broken, well everybody knows it, they can see that it's broken, the water's in, you call the plumber. The most dangerous are small leaks. And all shaitan wants is in our homes and in our belief, keep making small leaks, keep making small leaks. I'll do this, I'll do this, I'll do this won't anger him, I'll do this, this won't anger him. Before you know it, these small leaks are making the home flooded with difficulties. You put a little bit of pumpkin here, you put a little bit of devils here, you put a little bit of Santa Claus here, you put a little bit of trees here. All of this pagan belief angers Allah and takes away this way of sincerity and this way of purity. And these difficult days in which immense amount of difficulties entering the earth, we pray that Allah grant us sincerity, grant us purity and grant us true love. Anyone has a love for the Prophets of Allah Go out and feed people, give food. Instead of giving gifts to people who don't need gifts, give food to people, give water to people. InshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. There's nobody who represents Sayyidina Isa more in this region than we do. So, Whatever they think they believe is incorrect. Ruhullah and Sayyidina Isa then alhamdulillah we're under the feet of Sayyidina Isa who's the son of Sayyidina Muhammad What we uh, As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi if, uh, if we laser off the tattoos or burn them off Will the negative energy be released? <clears throat> we talked about that and the reality that it's going to be cleaned in the grave. So the angels will come with a fire to burn that off, especially if the servant is one who loves because you can't go back that, that every incorrection has to be corrected. If they're going to come with a fire to take that off, and the people who go now for laser, they say, it burns a lot shaykh, that's a very painful process. Well, if that burns, I think it's a sign of the one in the grave is going to be far worse. That you put it on, now go take your medicine and take it off. They have lidocaine, they have all sorts of gels, anything that people can do that they can take off, especially if they put satanic images and signs and even if you know family members, loved ones, it doesn't matter. The truth is the truth, regardless of who does it, the shaykh doesn't speak because he can't speak about it, he speaks the truth. Whoever wants to do it and put themselves in difficulty, that's their problem. But the relief and the, the judgment of Divine is they should be taken off and should take it off before you enter into the grave where it's much more difficult. Especially those markings that had creatures and, and emulations of signs of which they knew and didn't know. People put even languages, they don't know what the, that means in that language. So that's how bad the deceit and how bad the, the markings of these shayateen and, and, and the jinn that are ruling people, inshaAllah. Uh, another, <coughs> another tattoo question Sayyidi, As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi. Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, What if Muslim people are putting Islamic tattoos of like <coughs> crescents and stars and du'as? Yeah this is again, this is a… They're, they're using their brain and not understanding energy and that's what we described in the last day that the energy and understanding knowledge and light and energy would give you insight into fiqr and sharia. So. The people who are coming up with these fatwas, they think if it's something good then the means and the ends it's okay. But it's, that's like coming and saying, Shaykh, can I rob this bank to go make a masjid? 
See if the intention for making masjid is good but robbing bank is not good. There's no way a bad action could make something good. So the marking of your body, it's not yours, it's Allah's body given to you in trust and putting that upon the body then our belief is the energy for that action may not be good and may cause difficulty. If there's a chance that the energy can be altered in such a delicate battle that we're going through now, you know people are not going to survive these difficulties. 99% of the people don't have any training for energy, for attacks, for, for tafakkur, for contemplation. How will they survive all these difficulties? And if somebody marks, do they mark one time, two time, three time before you know it they're like a, a billboard of, of uh, all, all sorts of markings. So the belief system is the energy is not right, the energy is not correct and that you enter into an area where the energy can result in very negative effects. The ink and the, the material that they're putting within the body is not even something that is, is good for the body, it's not clean for the body and most of it probably comes from ingredients that are not uh, correct for the body. So it just all around is why you don't keep yourself to, to be beautific and clean. Allah loves cleanliness. And get your tattoo on your heart from Allah Dhikrullahi tatma'ina qulub means the best is the one whom is sincere does his zikr. Let Allah begin to heavenly inscribe within the heart His Divinely name upon the heart. But we can't fake it and say, well let me put it on the outside because I don't want to do so much zikr, I'll tattoo Allah's names all over my body but that's, that's not the way the system works, inshaAllah. So try to get your heart stamped with the dhikr of Allah with sincere work and effort and so not with the ink. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh At least a few other people have asked the same question. They're saying, what if Sayyidi we got these tattoos before we accept, accepted Islam and Naqshbandiya, does the shaitan still have power over us? Yeah, the, how, whatever we described of energy is the energy. So coming into Islam Allah forgives the sin. So no doubt Allah forgives but is there going to be a deficit in the energy? So somebody has like a snake all over their arm, they came into Islam. Okay, they came into Islam Allah forgives them but you still have to take actions to correct oneself and that's from Islam to Maqam al-Iman wal Maqam al-Ihsan, right? That's the same in anyone else coming, oh I come to Islam but now I, I, I don't want to follow the sunnah. Is that incorrect? Well some may say coming to Islam, okay that was your accomplishment, great. But tariqahs come and teach you not only that but reach to Maqam al-Ihsan, perfection. So in the state of perfection do you think it's appropriate? In the state of perfection if I have the ability to laser it off would that be a problem? So then I have to make that choice myself that maybe these are the struggles I want to go to and this is the difficulty. So some people want to cover, that's a big struggle, that's a big fight, that's not something easy. Some people want to grow beard, that's not something easy. Some people may say, I have markings on myself that are inappropriate and I'm going to have them burned off. And that's not something easy and if it's definitely satanic then they definitely want to direct themselves towards that. And if they had bad intentions while making markings upon their body then they want to direct to those first. So everyone has their own fight to do and they'll make their own decisions. We only want to teach about the energy of it. If there's something that is of a negative energy on me then I have to try to struggle to resolve that. And that may be fifth on my bucket list or first on my list depending upon what other issues people have in their life that they're trying to struggle with. We can't do it all at one time so we make a list and we try to resolve our, our, our issues, our characters and, and deficits in which we came. No doubt Allah forgave those who came new to Islam, alhamdulillah they forgiven. Now the rise, you want to achieve more spirituality, more realities, 
So, you know, people came even not in, in correct uh, things and they had to take certain actions to, to reach towards the realities of Islam. And that was the reality of Islam that uh, many people sacrificed to come into Islam. They don't drink, they don't drink with their family, they don't eat uh, the family dinners because they put a big ham in the middle of the table. So everybody is making sacrifices. No one sacrifice is greater than the other but that's the reality of Islam that when we're coming into Islam it's the heavenly kingdom and the heavenly kingdom only shows us that, my goodness this life on this earth was like a barn and I, I did so many things from the barn that when I'm trying to go back into the kingdom looks like it's a big difference. Yeah because the kingdom represents purity, light, good character, good mannerisms. And we make a list on things on how we're going to get to that and how we're going to get to those things and we slowly, slowly try to check those off inshaAllah. But our duty is to convey the reality of the energy and it's not a jump for anyone to do something right away, it's basically this is a teaching on energy inshaAllah. Uh, as Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, on the same topic, uh, someone's asking, are piercings on the ears and nose allowed for women? Yeah, that you have to follow your madhab and, and read from the, <laughs> the madhab that you're following and what their, their rulings are on the, the piercings and uh, how many and what's allowed on excessive piercings and what's the purpose of the excessive piercings. So that, that's, that's individual, people can look at their madhab and, and understand. More is the, the men and the interest that the men and, and the markings that men are putting upon themselves and a party on the front of the nose and what's that symbolic of. After we describe it that that's to move cows, the one that's between the two nostrils, then when you feel that you're inspired to put something like that, you have to then re re reflect in your meditation, is shaitan trying to show me that he can move me around and I'm like easy to control? And that's knowing the haqqaiqs. So also that we don't wear a tie because the, the symbol of a tie was based off of a cross. So it was a rope with a cross and that was the origin. What they would call karavat was a, a rope with a cross. And the way they wrap it was to put a cross on you. Well why shaitan has, he knows geometry. Why well, he's putting that onto somebody? So that inadvertently they don't understand that they're putting a cross onto themselves. Oh Shaykh you're extreme, no I'm just teaching the energy. Then the colors that the people wear, these are pyramids pointing down. So it means that these negative energies that are always pointing down to the body, there's a reason why shaitan has all of these. So from the tie that they wear points down, the two crosses points down. They're directing the flow of energy to the lower reality. And that's why then Mawlana Shaykh designed the Taj up. <clears throat> so take the, the crown Taj and to bring the energy and the crown and the reality towards the head. And that to have a ta'weez that protects the lower quadrant of the body. But there's a reason why their shirts have these points, why the karabat has the point. And if you say they're small, no problem, but at least you know the energy is a direct of the… Uh, of what they call sacred geometry, they're moving the energy flow down because they want the flow of human energy towards the lower latayfs so that they govern themselves by the lower latayf, right? You don't see angles pointing up towards the soul except for somebody whom is wearing a turban. So everything about the, the design in their clothing is to bring energy down. So they, they know what they're doing surprisingly but people think it's something you know cute. Those people who had big trouble with the inappropriate actions and thoughts with children, why were they making super large clothes on people? Because they were trying to imitate the look of how children look when they're wearing adult clothing. Very, very abusive and disturbed mentality. 
that when you wear super big clothes it's like when children wearing your father's jacket. It, it's an inappropriate look and image. They knew what they were doing but people didn't understand. So being conscious and meditating and contemplating, understanding these realities of energy are important. Everybody then can make their choice themselves. So we wear the what they call the, the French color, it's not French, it's Islamic color that we don't have any points going down. People can do that, you can go to when you buy a shirt you can take the color part off. If you want to free yourself of that energy and that understanding. Then when you wear a shirt that has no collar, nobody's expecting you to have a tie. So those are choices and people make their style. That's why the holy sunnah is the way of Prophet to get people to go back. That which you imitate you will become from them. Stop imitating them and go back to Sayyidina Muhammad and with that has a power, has a izzah and might. If it was necessary Prophet would have brought all those styles. But the style that he brought was the style of paradise inshaAllah with the might and majesty of Allah So imitate the kingdom and not the barn inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah When we share these knowledges how to overcome the people who try to attack our teacher and us with bad words. These things really make one sad and angry and it's unbearable <laughs> to stay and listen. Yeah. yeah, I think these types of knowledges is best to act upon ourselves. The, the, this type of stuff is better that we, we act upon the self and try to make myself to be stronger. And then the realities of love and teachings and other teachings, we spread those and share those posts and the guys will make a post for, for social media on this subject and you share the post. And the people and the comment with the people, that's why we gave that none will know it but the people of tafakkur is that the overwhelming tide of negativity no doubt will say, absolutely no relationship to this big gargoyle I have on my back and demons. You think it's common that you would want a, a big demon face on the back of your back? So no, of course they're going to attack uh, all of these things. And that's why best is first try to implement them in my life and in, in my own personal actions. And then slowly, slowly send out the media and send out the different uh, videos and, and the videos will sort of answer themselves. People don't like it, say, yeah that's okay, you don't have to like it but at least now you heard it. They can't come and say, oh I didn't know. So knowledge has a power and knowledge has an e immense power, it's like an arrow. Once you shoot that arrow into somebody's chest and into their heart, into their understanding, it doesn't go away just because you're angry, right? Because the, these words from heavens will repeat all night long to people. They'll see it, they won't like it, they'll be actually very angered at it because that's a, that's a stage in their psychology is to be angered by it, by to doubt it, then to deny it until it absorbs through and say, maybe this guy's right. So it'll, it'll, it'll hit the target it's supposed to hit, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa I saw a video where a person is crying saying that they can't pray or do good deeds for their parent because they died a non-Muslim. Am I allowed to pray for my ancestors, Muslim and non-Muslim or can I pray for my loved ones who passed away as non-Muslims and do good deeds on their behalf? Yeah, this following Wahhabi stuff, it's just that, that's ridiculous stuff. Leave those people, whomever you, you saw of Wahhabis and yeah they don't want even good people praying for good people. They said, you can't read Fatiha at the grave, you, you can't read Surah Yaseen, leave, leave their rubbish belief and don't pray for them when they die. And Allah will make no one to pray for them and they're going to see the difficulty of their own understanding. Judge not for you should judge. The way they taught is exactly how Allah will judge them, right? They're into that grave and absolutely no du'a will be accepted for them. Not a Fatiha, not a Qur'an, not anything. 
because of the hypocrisy of their understanding. And we talked about that last week, that's completely contrary to Prophet where even the Qur'an will intercede for you, the Ramadan will intercede for you, everyone will have an inhabitant in the grave and Prophet described that will be their amal and their actions. So many people are coming into the grave with people. So your prayer is something for everyone and you pray for believer, not believer because that's Allah's job, who's a believer and not believer. Maybe the person had secret belief that only Allah knows, it's not for us to judge Allah's creation. You do good deeds, good intention, pray for people, give food on their soul's behalf, feed people, go to their graveyard and recite the bayat, recite the shahada and asking Allah in the grave, now they're not going anywhere, make them to be Muslim. And sit there and recite there at the graveyard, why not Allah inshaAllah send the awliya into the grave and they take their shahada. Nothing's hard for Allah don't despair from the mercy and the hope of Allah and the, the, the only punishment are for people who hang out with these, these crazy belief system people and they make everybody sad and run away and that's, that's their goal, that's the, the, what they're trying to do is make people run from Islam because their, their, their creed is so difficult and, and so sort of hypocritical. When everything is supposed to be based on love and immense mercy and rahmah and all that we taught today is based on energy, not punishment, energy. You're trying to build yourself and you have markings that are going to defeat your energy, fix your energy. Allah forgave you, that's great but this is not about that, this is about building your energy. You want to perfect your energy, you have to fix the deficiencies. You want to enter into the realm of faith, that's a higher level. You have to fix even more. Some people come to Islam and say, why do we have to do zikr? Why do we have to do all these things? Well, you're not going to get to the maqam al-iman if you're not a person of zikr and not a person of salawat. So the door of faith is shut for you. Does it mean Allah punishing you? No, Allah accepted your Islam. Now you don't want to go through the door of iman, you have to do all these new criterias. Then the shaykhs say, well Iman that's nice, why you don't now come to Maqam al-Ihsan in which to worship Allah and see Allah And if you don't see, Allah sees you in everything. So that's huge level of faith, that's a whole nother door. So our Islam is about continuously sacrifice, continuously struggle inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amin yaseefum wa salaamun al mursaleen alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago. Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh.